Okay, today we're going to do through hole components. We're going to solder resistors, uh, capacitors, transistors onto a circuit board. This is our practice, uh, practice board. All the components are pre-tinned already. The board's tinned. I tinned them in the soldering pot in accordance with our uh, video we, we uh, did, I think video number two or video number one by hand. We're skipping that step. We're going to start out with the NASA handbook. We're on page 69. 69. We're on page 69, and we're going to uh, go ahead and start out with step one. Go ahead, Jim. Step one is to prepare the leads. Um, all part leads should be tinned and formed before mounting the part. Step two is to bend the leads with a lead bending tool. To find the correct measurement, place the bending tool between the holes into which the part is going to be inserted. Okay, I'm taking the lead bending tool. I'm looking at my uh, resistor hole that I'm selecting, R11. And I'm, I'm looking straight down on the board to see where the leads are going to wind up. If I put my lead through, put it up against there, and I can see that that hole is going to be about right. Let me check the next one. Ooh, that's even better. So I'm going to lay that down at number six. You're going to position the part into the proper slot for bending while holding the part body in the slot of the bender, use an orange stick to bend the leads. Here's my orange stick. It's nothing more than a wood uh, chisel looking device. I'm going to hold my resistor down with my thumb and then use my, my orange stick to flatten it. And I want to make sure, as best I can, that the leads are bent and in line. Just press her down. Okay. Insert the part. Step three, part leads shall be formed so that they will be installed into the holes in the PWB without excess deformation that can stress the part body or the end seals. So I just cleaned it real quick again, just so I don't insert any contaminants into the board. That's a nice fit. So now I have my resistor laying in and it's not deformed. It did not stress the leads as I put, put the uh, resistor onto the board. Step four, you're going to trim the leads, turn the PWB part side down, place a measuring device on the PWB next to the leads in order to obtain the proper lead distance and cut the lead. Straight through leads may be bent up to 30 degrees from vertical plane to retain parts during the soldering operation. Okay, all I did there, I flipped the board over. So the resistor didn't fall out under the floor. I just want to bend the resistor down so it'll retain it. In order to check the proper amount of lead, what I need to do is use a, a, a device which typically we use a resistor lead. Take a resistor lead, any resistor lead, bend it around, and that is going to be my calibrated measurement device. If I lay this resistor over, the, that, that resistor will allow me to lay my, the, uh, my dikes over the top and clip, and clip the resistor lead at the proper length. Okay, so I laid it down 30 degrees, and now, next step. Clean the lead with a soft brush using appropriate solvent. Okay, so before I clean it, I'm going to lay my resistor over, clip it, I do, these are safety glasses. You want to make sure you wear safety glasses and if all possible, hang on to the lead so it doesn't fly and hit your buddy. Lay it over here. Make sure my resistor is all the way up against the board. Lay that flat. Lay my diagonal cutters down, cut. And now I have the proper lead length sticking out of the, the, resi the resistor. Next thing. Oh, and clean. Okay, Jen. Um, step four, clinch the leads. Partially bend the leads in the direction of the trace. Cut the leads. Using an orange stick, complete the bend. The length of the clinched portion of the part lead shall be less than a half of the largest dimension of the solder pad or 0.78 millimeters, whichever is greater. 
Fully clinched leads are defined as leads bent within 75 degrees or 90 degrees from a vertical line perpendicular to the PWB. Step five, solder the leads. Position the solder iron tip so as to touch both the lead and the printed wiring head at the same time. Okay, I clinch the lead. I clinch the lead in the direction of the trace. So my, my trace is going this direction, so I'm taking the lead, clinching it down onto the trace. Same thing here. And I have to cover at least half the pad. So the, the lead is laying down and covering half the pad. This lead's a little long. I'm going to trim it a hair because it's going on to the conformal coating. Trimmed it. And again, clenching the lead. All right, lead's clenched. And I have to be 75 to 90 degrees clenched. There we go. I touched it again, so again, I need to clean this lead. And it's clean. Step five, solder the lead. Position the soldering iron so that you touch both the lead and the printed wiring pad at the same time. Okay, I clean in the other side. It did not mention in the, hand, uh, the handbook if it's a single side or a double side board. This is a through hole double side board. So you have to be sure before you solder you clean both sides of the board. Not only do you clean both sides, you flux both sides. So I'm gonna flux here, flux there. Then I need to turn over and also apply flux on top of the lead. So the solder is gonna get hot, flow through from here. It's gonna flow through onto the other side. So before I solder, I need to prepare my solder Again, I cut the solder so I don't burn off a piece, so you don't carterize it. You leave that hole open so the, the rosin flux can flow out of the solder itself and onto the joint. Now I have that flux. This is clean. The next thing I need to do is clean my iron. And I'm soldering next. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean. When I, I'm gonna clean it and I have this waste can, the waste can later, I'm gonna take this lead and. Throw that into my lead contaminant, contaminant container, but for now, it's going inside that box. The lead the... Now looking at the tip, before I do that, I noticed the tip was pretty oxidized. It, it wasn't tin last. Since it's oxidized, I need to... I need to try to clean that. Let me try that again. There we go, that looks a lot better. Okay, since I used that in, I need to cut another piece. Cut, clean it. Okay, now I'm ready to apply solder. So before I touch, since I've been sitting here, it's beginning to oxidize. You can see that it's changing colors. It starts turning yellow. So again, you gotta go to your sponge, and you just hit it a couple times, because every time you hit it, you'll watch your temperature drop on your soldering iron. Remember, that soldering iron has to maintain 600 degrees. So I again, hit it again, and now I'm gonna apply solder by barely um, touching the soldering iron, just a little dab, right? Just a little dab to tin the soldering iron. Then I'm gonna touch the solder pad and the lead itself and when I touch, I'm going to feed just enough solder to get a good fillet on top, but also enough solder to flow through and get a fillet on uh, the bottom and top of the board. So I'm going to hit it again because I was sitting here talking. Here we go. Good connection is the key. Just a little bit more and pull off. I'm going to do the next one. Since I already did that side, what I need to do is clean the iron again. Remove the oxidation. Cut the end of my solder. Clean the solder. Remove the oxidation. And try again with the, the next side. 
apply a little tin, touch the pad and the lead, and feed, feed, release, tin my iron so I don't just uh, damage it. And now, this looks good on this side, but I don't know if I got enough solder on the other side. So I'm going to flip it over and inspect the side to make sure I got good flow through. And then we'll have Jen um, read us the next steps. Clean the connection. Clean the connection, step six. Step seven is your inspection. You want to make sure it's free of flux residue, smooth and non-porous, undisturbed and having a finish that may vary from a satin to a bright. Solder shall fill it between the connection element over the complete peripheral of the connection. Lead contour shall be visible. Solder shall flow through the plate, through hole, and bond to the lead and the solder pad on both sides of the PWB. Slight re <coughs> recessing and shrink bag of the solder on a PTH below the solder pad is acceptable. Slight de-wetting of the solder around the okay. peripheral. Let's hold there for one second. Sure. So while I look at this, she said uh, um, the top, of course, we're going to look at the top. I'm removing the flux, make sure I don't have enough flux. I'm looking for a good fillet on the top. I need to look, look at my glass for a second. That looks okay on top. And it also said it's a pleated through board. So with the pleated through hole, it mentioned shrink back. Can you read that? Uh, read that again for us. A slight, slight recessing or shrink back of the solder onto the PTH below the solder pad is acceptable, providing the solder has wet the lead and on the solder pad. Right, and so what that means is, when you add solder and it starts going through the hole, it's gonna look really good, and then when it starts to cool, it shrinks back into the hole. So it's gonna shrink back into the hole, like this one. This, this end right here shrunk back into the hole, but, uh, there's still enough solder where it shows that it didn't de-wet. It didn't pull back and leave a gap. It didn't uh, uh, distort. And if you look, I don't know if you can see that very well. Yeah, tilt that up. There you go. All right, yeah. You can look on the top of the resistor, and it did shrink back a, a little bit, but it's, it's still fine. It's still within tolerance. The top, that is a nice fillet going to the top. And when you fill, uh, if you put too much solder, what you'll see is the solder will flow up the lead, bunch up against the resistor, that's no good. Typically, when you do this, you don't want any um, solder to build up and accumulate in the bend of the resistor. That would be cause for rejection once it builds up enough and, and touches the body of the component. Plus, it's gonna overheat it. While you're soldering, you typically do not want to go over three seconds. Three seconds, over anything over three seconds, uh, when you hit five, if the components are touchy, not like a resistor, but like an IC, you can destroy the component. So in many cases, you'll use a heat sink on a, uh, on a component like an IC. Now look at the bottom. The bottom has a nice fillet on both sides, and it's uh, flowing uh, nicely. Okay, go ahead and read the rest of the things we're looking for. Slight de-wetting of the solder around the peripheral of the pad on the part side of the PWB is not caused by rejection. Okay. Cause for rejection, sir. Okay, and that's what we looked at here. We are okay. And that's it. All right. And that is a plated through component, a resistor, of course, a capacitor, inductor, any, uh, those components would be exactly the same. You place the component, uh, you, you uh, angle your leads, clinch them, and then uh, make your joint and look for the feed through on both sides of the lead. And that is it.